What's up, y'all? It's me, Tasha C. And in this particular video, I'll be doing Bus, Sweat, and Heels, Season 1, Episode, I think, 5 now, after their temporary hiatus. Now, this particular episode, it kind of just deal mostly like with Mecca and a possible problem with dealing with alcohol dependency or abuse or, you know, or a strong addiction to alcoholism and um, how we're starting to see unravel and it's what's making worse in the situation that she's dealing with right now. But it's almost like she's reflecting whatever pain that she has or unresolved issues with her dad and her dad passing on people, you know, just reflecting on people who actually were, were concerned about her as more so than sitting here and trying to litter about the situation. Um, we picked up exactly where we left off. Um, she's coming near the house. She's loudly, loud, obnoxious. You're about triple the glass to how green the glass was. You got Brian trying to tell it to be quiet because they're on this patio um, slash house. I don't know if they're in a full house or some of that area, but they're somewhere outside of the um, the family house. And if it turns out, of course, Brian's parents are in the house and are entertaining guests. So she's basically just like, you know, can you just turn it down a bit, turn it up a notch? And when she sits down, I think Demetrius asked her something similar along the lines, I think, like, you know, how are you doing? And she's our flips like, I don't want to talk about that. And I think even Geneva, I think they all mostly all that were asking how she was doing. And she just kind of flipped it like, you know, y'all are sitting here belittling me and you don't understand and blah, blah. You know, sometimes questions like she feels offensive and thinking like they're coming at her instead of like being there for a type of thing. So to make a long short story, because I mean, this just dragged on. It was kind of sad, whatever. She got a point that she's, you know, first of all, I think one of the times she's up there, you know, Demetra and Geneva end up have walking away and stuff like that from that because they're just like, okay, we, we see this now. This is Wusa because she's singing coming to us all sideways and whatever. And then, you know, Bria, which turns out she blew her new makeup the longest. She's trying to comfort her and understand her until calm down. I think, yeah, yeah, Greg was, I, I think Greg was outside the phone, but she's trying to calm down, get calmer to down, down, something like that. And, you know, she's just trying to, you know, get her to understand, like, you know, it's okay, but you just have to calm down and respect your parents. You know, one of those type of scenarios. And, you know, she just feels like it's at least been one or twice. She first was going to walk out, and Bree said, you know, you know, let her, let her walk and get text because I don't want that, that negativity aura, on, you know, at this house or this first time because we don't need all that. And then she comes back again, walking back, and I think this was more after. Now, Greg was first trying to talk to her, too, uh, Demetrius' fiancé. And, you know, Demetria knows, like, you know, that he type person he is. That's why she loves, loves him with him because he's such a nice and cool ass dude. And he's just, like, you know, trying to talk to her, like, you know, it's okay and stuff like that. But these people are not trying to come at, you know, come at you or nothing like that. You know, basically trying to, let him, like, you know, calm down and stuff like that. But, you know, she's trying to get sympathy as if she's the victim here. And, you know, you know, and, like, Demetria and the rest of them are, was trying to come at her, you know, except for deception of a stake out of Greg. So, anyways, y'all, around this time in between, it was like I said, so much happened because the child is drunk, and then she's got these issues with her father, and then in between, right before, I think this is even before she had finally said this time, because she's just so belligerent that it's just, you know, it's just out everywhere. And she ends up sitting here and, and you know, telling, you know, like, Geneva and, uh, Geneva and Demetra, because, you know, Demetra, of course, ended up having to leave, leave that side and told Greg, like, mm, baby, the, we ain't got time to deal with that mess. We're not dealing with that madness, okay? And so, there's one time when Geneva says this, you know, back and forth, because she's just acting so belligerent again that she's walking around. Like I said, so much is back and forth, but just, just, it's just sad to see on the screen. And then you got a point where she calls Geneva. Now, I don't agree with Geneva. Say, Geneva's been kind of like, you know, some of the stuff she says, whatever, is kind of a little bit, mm, whatever. But then it was interesting that Micah decides to take the time out to call. Now, Nima said, you know, you need detox. But at the same time, there's just only so much you can say somebody when they're drunk, especially, you know, when they liquor so out of control and they're the type of person that's verbally out of control or, by, you know, like actions like violent out of control. You know, you can't, you can't, it's real, you can't really say anything because it seems like if you sneeze from depending on a certain person and how they act, the alcohol makes them, you know, like incredible hope or something just out of control and stuff. In her case is, you know, these people just asking what the hell, how the hell she was feeling already. She just snapped and talking about people are coming after her type of stuff. So she up here called and even, you know, Wesley, you know, Wesley Snipes, whatever. And then like, dang, I mean, cause that could be take part taking when it's like saying, it looks like a dude or if we're talking about Geneva cause she happens to be, uh, a chocolate, you know, or a brown skinned, uh, 
a, a lady, so I don't know what area she was coming from, but go figure. But of course, you know, when he was like just like brushing off someone, I mean, she was even changing her shoes to sandals just in case she was going to have to, you know, have to run, run away, whatever the case was, and keep on going. Uh, so it was just so much. It got to the point where as you got there in the kitchen with the slide, you know, the slide, slide, you know, run off the window thing, and they were locking it because they're only, like I said, the way Mike was just on the ramp, Mika was just on the rampage of just, I had it, this and this and that, y'all, y'all understand. And I think that was around the time maybe she finally had told her father just to pass 12, 12.45 a.m. But for the angles, I mean, my bless, my both my parents are still alive, thank God, I'm blessed to this day. They haven't, you know, been alive. I mean, I know people who have lost, you know, one of their parents, like, even in high school. It was just a sad story. They lost some of the children, you know, and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm leaving over the question to y'all. Like, do you feel like it was justified for Mako's behavior based on the circumstances she's just lost her dad? But like I said, if you think about it, I think her issues, even if her father wasn't, you know, and unfortunately got rest his soul, passed away, her problem you know, is 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 does she does need vision that she does need to talk to her. I don't know what she needs to do, but it is a serious problem where you're just you need wine almost to breathe type of thing in, in her case. At least that's what's some sort of thing. She even says herself, you know, I can drink wine every day if I want to. She gave me um a Rocky uh, uh sitting there with some uh, probably with some new um the new edition of Moscato. But I'm just saying that, you know, we're seeing, you know, unraveling how disturbing it uh how you know how sad the situation is, and, and she does need help. So hopefully, Lord willing, that she does get the help for the situation, and probably needs to talk to a grief counselor. You know, with issues with her father. You know, because she didn't get the chance to you know get the last answer or approval that she was trying to get from her dad. So, anyways, y'all, back to the situation. It got to the point where you got Geneva and Demetra trying to close the door. You know, I think Bree back Bree by that time was just like, okay, whatever, right? I think that. Right, a little bit after then, they were trying to call for a taxi for her so she could leave because she was getting out of hand. And it got to the point that she's simply trying to open up the wind, you know, the, the door that Benita was close time. So she was trying to come in there and try to possibly attack them. And Demetri Benita went on the other side of the other door on the back end, like, mm -mm, we ain't got time for this. We ain't got time for this. Uh uh, cut that. Cut that off. Mm -mm. Cut, cut that off because it was like their knife, their, you know, their knives and everything up in there. She may try to use that, you know, not to say they can't, you know, possibly throw hands up, but it's just saying is it is a dangerous situation and she is really out of control. So it ended up, and Greg had ended up, they made sure she, they called a cab and he made sure he told the cab to stay there. I don't know if it's the same, I don't, it wasn't the same taxi she came, uh, cab that she came in, whatever, man. So, she is that she ends up leaving, and in the confessionals in between, she still believes like they came down on her, and it was their fault. And you got this part real quick about the Melissa thing. Uh, Melissa's hosting a party. Uh, Daisy Dandelion is going with her, and um, she's Melissa's like you know when she takes photos and pictures and stuff like that. You know some of them guys sit there and um, you know it's basically like they're in their drive humping on their legs and stuff like that with the photos. And she, she realized, you know, when she was a student and stuff, she had the opportunity when she first came out and when video vixens used to actually make that cash and stuff like that, especially videos like, like the hype ones used to be one of the top, you know, music video producers and stuff. You know, she was on the ground and she realized like, sometimes highs and lows, but at the same time, she wants to get the stigma. So she's in one of those times in her life that she's just like, I want to be able to move on. I want to be successful still in what I'm doing. Just, you know, move on my chapter of my life and, you know, just try, you know, just one of the life questions. Like, I just want to be, you know, happy type of things, you know, mentally, you know, uh, financially wise and stuff like that. Right. So um, fast forward after they go to this event, because like I said, even though she doesn't like really doing the events and stuff like that, of course, she's doing because, you know, due to real estate is not taking off, at least at that time when they were, you know, when they were filming the show. Um, at least these last couple episodes. I heard, I think, that one, some, uh, one of my subscribers has said that she is doing well, um, which is good. So, um, she goes to see, I think this is Dr. Forgot what his name was, but he's a doctor that's like known to deal with issues like with hip hop, hip hop and stuff like that. You know, I think he's a professor also as well and wrote books and everything. Like he talked about Tupac and, you know, the and inspirational, uh, things about his message that he was proud of, to trying to present to the world, and um, you know, she was just talking about that. She, she's actually been, he's been like a mentor of her for like six or seven years. 
they did a, like I think either a show or a document or something like that or some type of like presentation or lecture I think and she met him and they were talking about the misogyny you know like the you know over sexual you know women being over sexualized and stuff like that in these videos and music and you know just in the music industry period and entertainment and so she was talking to him and she was just in having one of those moments when she was got a little emotion because she just didn't want to feel she was one time she didn't feel like herself. She wants to get out of this stigma of what she is, and she just wants, like I said, what I said earlier. He just was saying, you know what? I'm 53, and I'm still learning things. Don't worry. You know, you had a, you know, you'll get there and stuff like that. You're learning stuff like that. It was just one of those type of moments. So, um, but at the end, she did feel better, and he was able to talk to her where she wasn't no longer a set. So we'll get on to the next thing. Got Demetra, and you talking at the shoe store about the pop, this polo derby bit, which you're not really going to bring up in the next episode. Um, what else? Of course, Mecca has to talk. We got Daisy Dan in line a day. At first, she talked to Terry. I don't know whose house she was. She might have been back at the cousin's house she was before she got dropped off at Bria and all this other stuff happens. Bria's just like, of course, upset. Like, she doesn't want it. She's just so upset because she's just seen a side of Mecca that she didn't expect to see. And then you got, of course, her other enabler, Terry, because we all know Terry is like the manservant of a, a manservant of, um, make her to a certain extent and of course he's just like what do you mean it came in you like you're like he just doesn't know i think he uses more as we could tell at least that we know at least he knows how to hold his liquor better um he seems to be the sober one so when she's telling him about oh they came at me and blah 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 and they need to understand my situation and stuff of course he already like oh really they should be understandable blah 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 blah, blah. so make a you know she ends up meeting with them i don't know they came i forgot I think she they came over one uh her house and one house whatever it is she ends up meeting of course Dan Stanley and Melissa right and she comes to this whole story because even confess she's still so focused on trying to blame and reflect whatever problem re reject basically project whatever problems that she had or anger that she had suffered her dad and then he passed away she I think you know and the issue she had of not getting that last part of approval or you know a power smile or something whatever she was trying to get out of her dad before he passed away she. Um, it's projected on them because it maybe maybe ever y'all y'all seen something different, but it was kind of like as if she was just angry at them for no reason because it's like what did they say to her originally? She's actually was the one that came at them more sideways, not them. I mean, not them come after her, but she she came at them sideways, and that's kind of why they came to her. At least by not, but like I said, it's just kind of a sad situation in that case because the woman does need help. And like I said, even. If, I don't know if even just seeing a grief counselor might help her in those circumstances, but it's just you're just seeing her unraveling on control, and it's like she's blaming other people. And then when she explains the story, then she's making some like they were up there telling shooting me down. I'm just saying hi and stuff like that. And I don't know why they were coming at me this type of way, blase, blase, and all this other stuff. And of course, Melissa will be understandable because wasn't she also jumping with her on the couch the other episode? I'm just saying. Um, and it was just out of control with her behavior as the makeup was, you know, even it was, um, per promotion or party, whatever. And so, um, they're just like, Daisy decided to put on herself to call Bria because, of course, Mecca didn't expect this, uh, to happen. Of course, they're like, yeah, you know, we will expect Bria not to happen. And Daisy being, you know, the nice person that she is, Miss Dandelion decided to call her, um, Dandelion Weeds, also known as, and call Bria. And put her on speakerphone and asked, like, you know, what exactly happened. Bree was just, like, basically so much saying. And they extended. It was a long time talking, but you swear that you thought she was on the phone about at least an hour or so, or 45 minutes to an hour. And she's like, it's been 33 something seconds. Put her on the phone. And Bree was just kind of, like, just concerned about her. Maybe the conversation wouldn't get long, but it just over-exaggerated. But since, you know, the coach go to ride out for Mecca as opposed to Bria, Bria could have been on the phone for, like, maybe one second, and they still would have found something like, yeah, you see, she talking about this. And you know how Daisy always says something in the confessionals or to them or something, whatever. So, um, the last kind of scene I want to highlight, because like I said, it wasn't too much going on in this episode, was Bria decides to meet up with Michelle and um daisy because she feels like since they her friends want to see because she's trying to like i said she is concerned about makeup's behavior getting out of control you know and of course like i said you know a makeup was telling us if Kadiva just said out of nowhere said you deep detox so the way she's making it seem like she was just flat out victim and they just came out and attacked her um verbally and you know all this stuff and she just you know they just came after me blah 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 so when Bria's up there talking to them 
Even the fact that she didn't want to get a drink in the middle of the day and she was going to go back to lunch. She's dazed and confession house. Well, you know, this is New York, and I don't understand why it's a problem with getting, you know, everybody gets a drink in the middle of the day. You know, just like I said, they already seem like I said, they already have are going to be biased to whatever Bria's saying because they feel like makeup was makeup's in the right. And, you know, Miss, uh, Melissa, of course, personally feels more understandable because about her losing her dad at, the, you know, at a young at a young age or whatever. So, she, of course, she's going to feel more emotional because they feel like these people were heartless to her and they just went ahead and just attacked her um, for no reason at all. They, okay. So... Basically, me is trying to, you know, they're trying to say, like, you know, you don't, well, y'all came at her time, you know, Bria's like, you know, trying to say, like, no, you know, basically, she's trying to defend herself at the point where it's just like, you know what, um, Mecca does have a problem, and I think she might need help, but she didn't say individual, well, you're trying to say individual, you know, Melissa's rolling her eyes, and Daisy, of course, like I said, Daisy Danline Weed, of course, wants to sit here and kind of make it seem like, of course, Mecca doesn't have a problem, it's like everybody else do. It is one of those conversations that really too much is happening in it. I'm surprised that, you know, Bria didn't ask for a check before, you know, um, you know, before even getting her meal because they just already trying to make it seem like y'all just came wrong at her and she's a victim, blah, blah, blah. And they're just trying to make it seem like, you know, makeup doesn't need, you know, any help, basically. That's that's what's last argument. That's the end of this video because that's pretty much all what it was for this episode, y'all. So I hope you have a pleasant evening, a pleasant night, and a pleasant weekend. And I definitely will see you. Thank you for all the love and support and everything else. But I will see y'all in the next video, most likely tomorrow, because, you know, Love and Hip Hop Part 2 reunion looks a little better, of course, than last week. All right, y'all. Y'all take care.